I'm going to tell the truth and I'm going to expose everything that there is in this case. Uh, you know, whether the media reports on it or not, it's going to be on the record. And, you know, people may be shocked that the underwear bomber actually gets a verdict of not guilty instead of guilty. But you know what? The man, even if the man tried to kill me, he deserves a fair trial. He doesn't deserve to go to life in prison because... Uh, you know, the evidence not being presented fairly in the case. Well, the issue is he was gotten on the airplane. Those are all accomplices or, or, or potential accomplices. The cover-up is proof that they are the accomplices. Uh, I mean, we have the Undersecretary of State in sworn congressional testimony saying an unnamed agency told him to help the underwear bomber. I mean, that is absolute proof right there that there needs to be a serious public discourse about this. And then you add the absconding, all this cover-up going on. I mean, that is definite evidence. And I know you don't like to speculate, but uh, this could be like Fast and Furious. This could bring them down. It I'm going to... Sorry, go ahead. It could actually be bigger, Alex, if you start pulling at the string of the uh, ball of yarn. Because, you know, you start looking at these things one step at a time. Okay, well, we have uh, a so-called terrorist. Okay, well, now we have an admission that he was put on the plane intentionally. Okay, now we have evidence that he had a fake bomb, which is going to come out in testimony, the, ex the experts that are going to testify. Okay, so where did he get his fake bomb? Well, obviously, it was given to him by you know, an undercover agent of the U.S. government. Okay, so now we have that. We also have admissions that Anwar al Alaki was involved in this plot. Well, how is he involved if it's a fake plot by undercover U.S. intelligence officers? Okay, I guess he's also undercover U.S. intelligence officer. Uh, if we have that, then, you know, is bin Laden also an undercover U.S. intelligence officer? You can see where this is going, Alex. You just keep pulling the string, and pretty soon everything unravels. That's how big of a story this could be. Huge. Huge. Well, absolutely. I've been out of the loop because I've been driving around, you know, uh, Texas protesting the Fed, and a listener said, hey, Haskell's got some big stuff. You better get him on. And then I'm like an ignorant buffoon talking about Fast and Furious with you, and you go, oh, by the way, one more thing. And Kurt Nemo just came in here and said, no, it's in the local paper this morning. So I guess this is national news that you're the only uh, witness that he's saying he's going to call. And you'd think every media station out there would want to put you on live. But you notice they're not doing that because they want to just have the AP call up and twist everything you've said. Man, this is, I'm going to tell you something, Kurt. I'm going to be honest. I'm not trying to scare you. I know you say all they can do is kill you. Uh, and, and I got the same position here in my life. And once you know this evil's going on, you instinctively, spiritually, whatever you want to call it, no, it's got to be face down, especially when it happens to you individually. But I got a chill when you announced that, uh, and, and I was like a deer in the headlights here, for your safety and for Mutalib, because whatever they're pressuring him with, and I don't like to speculate, but I've got a pretty, I know you've, seems like you're smarter than I am in some ways, so I wish you would speculate, because, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to put my finger on this, but whatever pressure they've got on him, isn't working, whoever they're threatening in his family, or he's figuring out he's been set up, because they do that a lot with these type people, uh, because I've seen so many of these in history, not just in our country, but other countries. We know there's a playbook, and so I would follow playbooks of past patsies, McVeigh, Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, folks like that. You start getting a really, Sirhan Sirhan, a really clear image of how they're going to pull this, and, and how they've profiled him, and what they've done, but you two guys, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Kurt, I'm not trying to scare you and your wife. You know this. You need everybody's prayers right now. And you also, you're not suicidal, correct, Kurt? <laughs> no, Alex, I'm not suicidal. You would never commit suicide? <clears throat> no, never. Okay. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm sorry to even raise this, but I mean, I, I mean, I really feel the danger level here. No, I understand. I, you know, that... I understand where you're coming from, especially with the case of the D.C. madam and some of these other cases. So I know, you know, I know where you're coming from. Well, you know what, though, you're so public now 
that I, it's just, wow. Wow. Right, so, but the, the question is, how, how is the prosecution plan on handling this? Obviously, I present a huge problem to them. So, you know, that's, I think that's a legitimate question I have. We'll take the anthrax attack. They tried to frame three patsies. Didn't work. So the fourth guy they grabbed, they took to a government psychiatric facility. He ODs on prescription Tylenol while he's in straitjacket. And now it's come out that he was completely innocent. And world authorities are coming out saying it's totally fake. So, I mean, that's what I'm talking about with the feds, man. They are, they do these botched things like launching the anthrax attack, first World Trade Center attack, all of it. And then they go to any end to get their patsy nailed. But now you've got Fast and Furious. It, it just, the difference is 10 years ago, they still had some credibility. They have no credibility with people, Kurt. Well, no credibility with people that are paying attention. Yeah. A great deal, yeah. great deal of the population of the United States doesn't pay any attention. So, uh, you know, they still have some credibility with those that just put their head in the sand. God almighty. Uh, folks, I don't know if Kurt even wants me to do this, but uh, Kurt, would you be happy for folks out there to pray for you? Oh, sure, Alex. Well, I, I yeah. found it. I found it really it does good. And and, uh, and I also write about you. Give us your blog, because I think the safest thing here is to get you as much attention as possible. Give your blog out for folks. Sure. Haskellfamily.blogspot.com. All right, Kurt, I know I've been basically just dumbfounded here by this announcement on air that everybody else seemed to know. Uh, anything else you'd like to have before you join us tonight and kind of recap this on the nightly news? Just one last thing. You know, I found something else out over the weekend that the, pro the prosecutor's office that is handling this case, the last terrorism case that they handled, uh, Katrini was the guy's last name, was overturned on appeal because the prosecutor's office hid evidence from the defense during the trial. And I've seen two pretrial hearings already where the prosecutors have attempted to not turn over evidence to the defense in this case. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, if they've got a lone nut pop doing this with a firecracker in his pants, why not just go with that? All of this covering up and twisting, I mean, that's and there's so much of it. I, I forget in Latin where covering up something is, is called the highest form of proof uh in some cases it's even higher than eyewitness um what is that latin term do you remember that kurt no i don't somebody will email it to me all right we'll, we'll talk to you tonight sir thank you so much for spending time with us no problem alex wow i am just uh, man i tell you this is crazy and i'm glad kurt askell trust us enough to come on this show uh when he's not talking to the rest of the media um yeah, here it is, Chicago Tribune. Lawyer may testify for defense and terror case. You know, more and more, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. I'm going to be honest. More and more stuff just getting so weird. And all the people I'm talking to and that you're listening to, I mean, when does it end? I want the government to not be terrorist. I want, hey, hey Kurt, come on in, buddy. I'm sorry. I know I asked you to come up there and I need to put a speakerphone in here. What's going on, Commander? Oh yeah. Hey, uh, how's it going on that article about uh, uh, head of federal uh, head of Federal Reserve Security? Okay, but this my computer must cache forever. I knew it'd be up. I just keep hitting refresh, refresh, refresh. I think that's a really big article. I got all this news I want to cover, and I'm so exhausted. I don't even want to cover it. Oh, there it is. Head of security at San Antonio Fed admits institution is private. Head of security at San Antonio Fed admits institution is private. Well, that is a big deal because when that cop was standing next to him and the guy admitted that it was private, the cop was like, what? All these years, the cops are told that we're crazy because we said that. Just, no, you, there's no end to this. It's, it's all a false reality, man. Yeah, the, the only thing is I couldn't, get, I couldn't find his name, so we don't know what his name is. It's not in the video. All right. Well, I thought he said, he said, you got to talk to Captain... Captain didn't say his name because I don't think he knew that San Antonio cop didn't know the guy's name. No, I looked it up. I think his name's on there. Okay. Or, I'll, I'll try. It doesn't it. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Why don't you just call down there? Oh, did, it's, it's a did. holiday. I did. I got voicemail. It's a holiday. Call tomorrow. It, it, it doesn't matter. There's the sign at the Dallas Fed. It says private property.
It says Captain Nemo. That's the first comment. <laughs> Everybody knows they are private. Well, that's original. We'll call you Captain Nemo. So as Fed admits the truth, hell of a long story for the news that does nothing to change the situation. Yeah, it's your fault that we're here working hard and exposing this just because this guy just because this guy already knows it means everybody else does. People think by osmosis. Like all the time some news breaks and I get emails going, you piece of filth, you didn't report this. It's not even and I'm like, well, thank you for letting me know. Most people, it's, it's not even on their Pick the mic up. It's not even on their radar screen most, for most people, you know. They don't know it. But you know, these are the kind of comments we get. That's okay. Well, Kurt, you deserve it. I mean, you're a bad person. I am. I'm terrible. I mean, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> but there's the proof right there. There's a photo of, the, of this private um, the other property right there. Bingo. Oh, it's nothing. I bet that guy's a paid shill. I mean, this is a big deal. I mean, we could have the Virgin Mary set down in front of him and make him a pasta dinner and they wouldn't, you know, care. We could have space aliens laying in this guy's backyard. He wouldn't care. Head of security at San Antonio Fed admits institution is private. Amazing. And we got to call up Dave and get him to change the headline because I was wrong when I said that guy was a cop. The cop's there, but that's the head of their security. Thank you, Kurt. I appreciate okay. you coming in here. Good job on that. All right. We'll, we'll come back and take some calls. I got a bunch of news I got to get to, too, on Obama. Maybe I'll go into overdrive, but... I am so exhausted, man. It just beat me to death going to those protests this weekend. I'm sure going to UFC wouldn't. If you start pulling at the string of the uh, ball of yarn, because, you know, you start looking at these things one step at a time. Okay, well, we have... Uh, a so-called terrorist. Okay, well, now we have an admission that he was put on the plane intentionally. Okay, now we have evidence that he had a fake bomb, which is going to come out in testimony, the, ex the experts that are going to testify. Okay, so where did he get his fake bomb? Well, obviously it was given to him by, you know, an undercover agent of the U.S. government. Okay, so now we have that. We also have admissions that Anwar al Awaki was involved in this plot. Well, how is he involved if it's a fake plot by undercover U.S. intelligence officers? Okay, I guess he's also undercover U.S. intelligence officer. Uh, if we have that, then, you know, it's Bin Laden also an undercover U.S. intelligence officer. You can see where this is going, Alex. You just keep pulling the string and pretty soon everything unravels. That's how big of a story this could be. Huge.